Hi, welcome to The Canvas. I'm Azar Zahid Karim, and today I have with me a very special guest. She's a creative artist who experiments with different types of mediums. I have with me Dilla. Dilla, how are you doing today? I'm good, thank you, Azar. Art, it is an expression of skill, technique, and creativity. It's where you bring your imagination onto a canvas. I'm your host, Azar Karim. I am a producer, content creator, and an artist. I invite you to this show to meet other artists. This could be the creative, the hungry, the energetic, and the aspiring. And get to know their insights on their art, their creativity, and more about themselves. Want to know what it takes to be an artist? Welcome to The Canvas with Azar Zahid Karim. Tell us about yourself as a person as well as an artist. Okay, so I'm actually, um, art is just something I do as a hobby and a passion. But I am uh, the managing owner of Healing Island, which is a natural wellness product brand which is sold locally. Um, I haven't really done art mm -hmm. in any form of education, but here and there maybe I've just, you know, taken some course or whatever that was interesting at the time. Um, but as a child, I've always been painting and, you know, just being creative mm -hmm. as any child would. And then, um, like any mother would do, my mom uh, put me to um, Latifa Ismail, mm -hmm. at the time a very good art teacher. And I worked with her for a couple of years. And um, then, you know, after you start your career and all of that, you just forget about, you know, your passion. Yeah. And uh, one thing led to another and it just went away. Mm -hmm. And uh, later on in life, when I really, really wanted to get back to art, I started all over and it just came back. So what was that push that made you think like, I have to get back into this? Actually, um, my career was very hectic because I worked for an apparel buying office and I was always into the apparel industry. Mm -hmm. And um, that took a lot out of me. Um, you know, I had to travel a lot and I just wanted, I felt I was missing something. something. Yeah. And um, well, that's what really made me do what I really love doing. So how would you describe your art style? Because you tell me, like, what is it? That's a tough one. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't say I'm a particular style. Mm -hmm. um, I love to create and I would, I would use anything that would help me make it look the way I want it to look. So in terms of, let's say, workspace essentials, what is it that you use? Like different mediums or what do you need exactly? I use different mediums. I use, um, um, I use, I actually paint on pottery. I paint on canvas. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's endless actually. Mm -hmm. So in terms of influences, you mentioned Latifa. Yes. Who else has influenced you like in terms of your art style and let's say, is it like maybe environment or surroundings, anything that has influenced you in your art? Yes, actually, um, nature. Mm -hmm. um, I love nature and I think if you see most of my work, um, it goes back to nature. It's yeah. either, you know, trees or leaves or something that's out there. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I love looking at them because sometimes you look at a leaf and you think, okay, it's a green leaf, okay, mm -hmm. and it has a shape. But actually, you, when you really look at it, you see a lot more. You see how the leaf is made out of so many different veins and, mm -hmm. you know, that itself creates its own design. So what would you say is your most favorite piece from what you have created? I have a couple of pieces, actually. Okay, so one which was really interesting was um, a 15-piece tree that I did. Mm -hmm. um, that was very fascinating for myself because I started off with three pieces mm -hmm. and I, I, I wanted it for my home mm -hmm. um, because it was a photograph I had taken in Africa. I just looked up um, at the trees and I clicked this photograph and I wanted to recreate that. Yeah. And um, when I was having my exhibition in 2014, 
uh, I had this big wall and I thought, hmm, this is going to be nice if I just make this the tree. Mm -hmm. And that unfortunately was sold. I didn't want to sell it, but um, it, it went, I mean, it turned out, although I say it myself, it turned out quite nice. Mm -hmm. And so that's one of them. And then of course, uh, my second would be a lotus leaf, which I, um, I, I did it in a, in a style where you could that the leaf is almost transparent and so that's my second and my third would be um, Ruan Valley Sire um, on a moonlight night. Okay, so now earlier we were talking about when you had that shift when you wanted to focus on art so what was initially people's reactions around you? <laughs> um, I have a very supportive husband so he was all out. It was like, you know, go for it, follow your passion. Mm -hmm. But I have always been used to working and always being used to uh, being on the go. Yeah. So it was a little difficult to be a full-time artist, of course. you know, because you, you can't. Because people still have that feeling that it won't get you that much money, it's very hard to get clients, all yes. that. Yes. So let's say now in terms of social media, has it been of any help to you? Absolutely. Actually, during um, lockdown, mm -hmm. I started my own page um, yeah. and it's been very interesting because a lot of artists from around the world, they message you and they say, you know, they ask you how you do certain things mm -hmm. and, and it's really nice because you can ask them as well, you know, how, how do you mix things, how do you, you know, so it's, it's, it's a very nice interaction. So I've also heard you have exhibited before. Tell us more about that. Yes, um, my first exhibition was in 2011 mm -hmm. and that was a joint exhibition uh, with uh, Shaman Mendes and uh, Minha Mausikin. Um, that was basically black and white line drawing mm -hmm. and that's something actually I learned from um, our mentor, Mr. Karuna Siri Vijay Singha. Um, I enjoyed line drawing, I enjoyed uh, creating with it and um, that's what I actually bring into my art. I mix all of my styles together mm -hmm. in my art. I don't use, I don't do one painting with one style. Yeah. So I, I, I because I don't, I feel I bring out a, a more three-dimensional effect in a painting by doing so. Um, I also had my solo exhibition in 2014, mm -hmm. Golden Dawn. Um, that was basically black and gold um, acrylic work and also line drawing within the acrylic work, which brought out the details in, in every um, painting. Um, and since then, I haven't really uh, thought about having an exhibition, mm -hmm. but maybe in the future, who knows. Maybe um, this year? I'm not sure, but right now I'm really enjoying teaching. Mm -hmm. And um, if, if I am doing an exhibition, I have to be uh, working full time mm -hmm. on my creations because you can't, um, I feel I can't uh, do my day job as well as work on an exhibition. So if I do have to, I have to set a date and then just work towards it. When you exhibited for the first time, how did that feel? That was great, actually. Um, I, I never thought, you know, that uh, my paintings would have an impression on, mm -hmm. on, on people as much as, you know, uh, it, it was just such a good feeling and I was actually overwhelmed by that first exhibition, the joint exhibition mm -hmm. I had because it was also a style that I acquired, you know, it wasn't something that I, I did by myself. So mm -hmm. it, it was really nice to see, and that was my encouraging point mm -hmm. right there. You know, I, I just, from that day onwards, I, I got more confidence and, you know, I, I just kept working. You felt this was something I could go with in the future. Then. Yes. So Dilla, tell me, what's one of the worst things you've heard as an artist? <laughs> um, I think the worst thing I would have heard is, oh, if she can draw like this, I can draw too. <laughs> it's just that easy, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so now in terms of future plans, what's next for you? Um, I am actually uh, 
working on commission work mm -hmm. and I really like doing that because um, it's challenging as well mm -hmm. as as much as it is creative, it's challenging because you're always doing what the client wants you to do mm -hmm. and it's for a certain space and it's it's a color theme and it's it's something that you have to actually please the client, not yeah. yourself. So I find that very interesting because um, it's a lot of work, mm -hmm. but I still find it interesting and it's very challenging. So like, let's say what's... What do you usually hear from these clients? You don't have to mention their names, obviously, but what do you usually hear? Like, what do they ask for? Um, so they want uh, certain colors and um, they want sizes. Mm -hmm. And then they, they say, oh, we don't want it to look like this or we don't want it to look like that. I want it to look, I want it to look soft. I want it to look, you know. So sometimes you don't understand what they're saying mm -hmm. um, because softness to them and softness to me can be mean completely two different things, right? Exactly. So what I always do is I always draw something or paint something mm -hmm. and I show them something that's unfinished. But certain customers, you can't even show that because they get totally thrown out of balance and they say, no, this is not what I wanted. But I, I first talk to the client a couple of times and then you understand where they're coming from and mm -hmm. how, would they, how they would like to see it. And then at the right time, I show it to them. And then whatever changes they want, I do make them. It's because at, at the end of the day, that's what the client wants. Mm -hmm. So now I heard about Art Spa. Can you yes. tell us more about that? Yes, actually, Art Spa began uh, again during lockdown. Because mm -hmm. I had a load of friends who were driving themselves nuts at home with mm -hmm. nothing to do. And they would be like, what, why, how come you're blissfully happy in your little world of art? I'm like, yeah, you know, you guys need to try it. So then the same uh, thing about, oh, we can't draw, you know, you're mm -hmm. lucky you can. I'm like, no, try it. So we actually got on Zoom yeah. and I actually gave them a, a class one day and they were like, oh my God, we need to do this. Yeah. So now I'm actually doing it at home and I have a couple of... Uh, artists will come in and we exchange ideas and for me my passion with art is I want to pass it on mm -hmm. I want to pass on everything I know to somebody else who can take that and make it better what is that initial feeling you get when you actually teach them and they learn something oh it's 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 an amazing feeling really uh, because you you can see the potential in somebody else exactly and and you really want to help that person and when that person is getting better every day it's it's such a beautiful satisfaction of course. it's like that saying you know you never know you're good at something until you absolutely. absolutely so now a few words of encouragement for the audience and for the people watching mm -hmm. i think everybody has creativity within themselves mm -hmm. but they 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 you know kind of have this barrier that oh we are not artists nobody has to be an artist you know, you can put your ideas out there. It's it's an expression. So I think everybody in in some way should express themselves. And I feel that is such a stress reliever. It's the best creative outlet for anyone. Absolutely. So thank you, Dilla, for coming to this show. And I wish you the best for your future endeavors. Thank you very much for having me.